We are pleased to be speaking to Elaine Katz from Kessler Foundation. We just finished up this after Life After Stroke Innovations and in Research, Reclaiming Life and Regaining Independence. Elaine, we just had a powerful uh, conversation and dialogue, not just with the audience, but with these great panelists, talking about life after stroke. What's your biggest takeaway from this? I think the biggest takeaway is that it's so important after research to get it right into practice. And the advantage of Kessler Foundation is that we're able to do the research and with our relationship with Kessler Institute, take it right into a clinical setting. Yeah. You know what's so interesting about this? You think you know the questions that are going to be asked. We had an open forum where we were talking about life after stroke, uh, regaining your life after stroke, and the the value of the research. It's fascinating because this work is not being done in this way anywhere across the country. Well, that's one advantage we have at Kessler Foundation is that we're doing new innovative research and at the same time we're disseminating it not only in the United States of therapists but also internationally. So our research is not, we're known as Kessler Foundation and Kessler Institute, our relationship in New Jersey, but we're way beyond that. We have an international reputation for our scientists. We've had this discussion before and when you're in the studio with us. Remind folks. Uh, again, folks know that we are, uh, our production operation, our not-for-profit production operation is one of the grantees, but some of the grantees that you support are really directly involved in helping those who are dealing with all kinds of challenges, correct? Correct. I think we have our research side of the foundation, and then we have our program side, which works with organizations to increase employment. And then we also have grant making that helps people in sports and recreation, and also in, in other therapies that may be reimbursed by insurance. One of the pieces that's interesting as you talk about life after stroke, um, and one of the areas that's fascinating to me is that people who ask questions today, not just about life after stroke, but they wanted to understand risk factors associated with stroke and, and what can I do. Were you surprised at that? I think I was very surprised that it was just exercise could really diminish your chance of stroke. But really, I think what came out of the discussion is that disability can happen to any of us. We, it's a club we can join at any point in our lives. And the important thing that came out through this discussion is that it really takes a team approach. It's your own physician with a team of therapists working with your family that can make a difference in your quality of life following any injury or accident. A final message to everyone about the research going on here and how people can actually find out. And the average person watching right now, public broadcasting files, seeing us digitally, wherever, someone says, well, I want to find out about that research. Is it actually accessible to the average person or do you have to be part of the research community? I think the important thing is our research is open to anyone. Uh, if you contact us at KesslerFoundation.org, there's information on our website on how you become part of the research study. Um, you actually become part of, potentially? You can become part. We'll screen you. We have many different studies going on. Tonight's event was about stroke, but we have studies going on in spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, uh, multiple sclerosis. So we work in a whole host of different other areas, which is probably another show for you. Um, but at the same time, um, please contact us at www.kesslerfoundation.org. Of course, you could also give us a call. And um, we'd be happy to direct you in the um, right to the right person who could help screen for some of the studies. Thanks, Lane. Thank you. I am honored to be uh, speaking to one of the participants here at the uh, Kessler Foundation Life After Stroke um, Conference. He is William Bo James. We met you at last year's conference. Uh, and you're a stroke um, robotic exoskeleton participant. Um, you're from Newark, New Jersey, my hometown, from the same hometown. But what I am not is a former middleweight boxer, firefighter, sergeant first class in the National Guard. We thank you for your service. We thank you for talking to us. When people hear about this, uh, exoskeleton, what is it and what's it like to be in that um, skeleton? Oh, to me, when I first got into it, I didn't know what to expect. But once I got in, they told me, you know, what it's going to do. I loved it. It's like, I didn't want to get out of it. <laughs> you were moving. Yes, I was moving. Mm -hmm. Now, you experienced a stroke um, Feb February of 2015. Yes. How did it change your life? Change a lot. Stop me for a lot of things I used to do, you know, like in the gym, work with fighters, you know, and then my running and stuff, I, my everyday routine. So it really, really put me, you know, really slowed me, stopped me for doing a whole lot of things. 
And, and by the way, I want to be clear. You're working out all the time. You were in the gym. You were taking care of your business. The stroke happens in the beginning of 2015. Your life changes. This exoskeleton has given you what? Actually, it's like gave me, you know, gave me a second chance, you know, getting back on track, getting my life back together, back to what I used to do. How does it actually help? I mean, because I heard you back in the gym, I heard you training some future champs. How does that work? It, well, it work is like now, you know, I, I get out, you know, I still do, because I'm now working out every day now with things, you know, with stuff what they gave me from a therapy, but I still do at home, you know? It would, Describe your workout. Oh, a little work with the leg and the arm, you know, stretching the arm, stretching the leg with the elastic rope and stuff. So it's getting better, yeah. You're confident about your recovery, aren't you? Yes, I am. Why is yeah. that? Because I know, I know. You know, as a fighter, you always had, you know, always bleeding yourself that just you go do better. And I, and I feel as though me being as a fighter, I could fight this. All the fights I had, I know I could fight this too. I could beat this too, you know? So I want to be back 100%. Mm -hmm. So, Bo, let me ask you this. You put on this, this exoskeleton equipment. How, how challenging was it to learn how to actually use it? In the beginning, it was hard. But after a few times in it, you got, I got used to it. I love it. I love it. And now? And now? When you put it on? Yeah, I'll put it on now. And you move pretty good with it. Uh-huh. Yes. What's your message to anyone else? Because there are 7 million Americans dealing with a stroke. What would you say to them right now? i say, no, you got to take a day at a time, but never, never give up. Stay in the, stay in the game because you will be back to 100%. Just stay with it. Just keep working out. Stay with it. Where does your positive attitude come from? My grandkids and my kids, you know, so they keep me positive. When I think of them, you know, keep me positive. Well, we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much. Steve, thank you, Steve. Thank you very much for having me. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Adler Aphasia Center, Wells Fargo, Seton Hall University, PSE&G, New Jersey Sharing Network, NJM, and by Josh S. Weston. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey, and by Commerce Magazine. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.